Sometimes you need a fresh start and God often can provide things, people that bring us refreshment, that give us that new invigoration in our life and in our ministry and our service of God. And as we return to the book of Acts today, we left off at uh, in December from Acts chapter 15. We pick it up in Acts chapter 16 and there's a fresh start. Last time we saw there was a painful divide between Paul and Barnabas. They couldn't agree over John Mark. And we, it reminded me as we looked at Peter, uh, 1 Peter, and finished that off, that Mark later came good. And Peter sends the greetings of Mark to the church abroad. And it's really wonderful. But right here in the book of Acts, we've seen he's been such a disaster, a deserter, and... Uh, Barnabas is saying, give me another go. And Paul said, no, let's not. And so it must have been a very difficult time for them both. Uh, Long-standing gospel partnership and friendship fractured. And it will take some years before there's healing there. But God gives a fresh start. A fresh start to Paul and to his ministry and to the gospel going forward into Europe. It's really wonderful. We're in Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Paul went on to Derbe and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a believing Jewish woman, but his father was a Greek. The the brothers and sisters at Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him. Paul wanted Timothy to go with him, so he took him and circumcised him because he knew the Jews who were in those places, since they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they travelled through the towns, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem for the people to observe. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. And so here we encounter Timothy, who we know from the rest of the New Testament is going to be Paul's lifelong companion, friend, uh, student, disciple. Uh, in fact, in his last letter into Timothy, Paul calls Timothy, his son, his spiritual son. Now we know Timothy's got a father, uh, this man. But the, such is the relationship, the friendship, the connection that these two men developed over the course of their life and ministry together, that it was it was if they were father and son. And Paul's continuing on with the work despite the, the painful divide and uh, he's going back at it. And sometimes you just need to slog through those hard times and you don't know what things God's going to bring and the refreshment that he's going to bring. And little did he know he was going to encounter this young man. He, is he? Well, he's there in a town, one of the towns of Derby and Lystra in that region and uh, that's up in sort of Turkey these days. Uh, they are, um, he, He's there and he's a, a weird child of a mixed family, a Jewish mother who has this faith that we read about in 2 Timothy. We read how encouraging she was and that her mother before her was that the mums had passed down this godly instruction of their children in the Jewish scriptures and they had come to faith in Jesus uh, later on in life. And the whole church knows about this young guy who's come up through the ranks, I guess, of the youth group and into uh, into the adult ministry. Uh, we don't know what dad thinks about all this. He's not a believer. The difference in their situation to ours today is that uh, she likely had no choice about her marriage. And so uh, we're instructed in the Bible not to marry unbelievers, not to marry outside of the faith. But uh, she's stuck in this situation, but she's done such a great job, loyally, faithfully bringing up her son to know the Lord. And here he is, this young man. And uh, Paul is so impressed by his faith, by the training he's received from his mum and grandma, uh, that he takes him with him. But he goes through this unusual thing. We're told that Paul had Timothy circumcised. Now that's a painful surgery, uh, particularly as an adult. And uh, the reason we're told is because of the Jews that are around. Now Paul's, I think not because he's afraid of them. He's stood up to Jews plenty of times, his own people, uh, when he's known that they're wrong for turning to Jesus and sticking with the ceremonial law. And in fact, 
the whole issue of circumcision has already become such a great issue and the Jerusalem Council had to decide on it in uh, Acts chapter 15 whether they would require the Gentiles to be circumcised. There was a division in the church warring. Uh, and the conclusion is no, you don't need to be Jewish in order to be Christian. You don't need to go back to the sacrificial system and all those ways of doing things. There are things from the Old Testament law that are about God's moral will and stuff, and we should obey those. And so the council makes that distinction, and they say, yes, here's some of the things. You know, we shouldn't be involved in idolatry. The Gentiles need to repent of that. But in terms of being Jewish, they don't need to. So why does Paul do it? Well, he does it for the sake of the gospel, not because he's afraid of people who attack him, but so as to win the Jews even though it's going to be a hard battle, as we're going to find out as we go along, he's trying to do everything he can not to cause offence to the gospel. And Timothy agrees with that, so much so that he goes through the pain. And sometimes, it, I mean, it shows us we've got to put ourselves out for others, put ourselves out for the sake of the gospel. And Paul and Timothy are great examples of that. Uh, Paul's made hard decisions along the way. Timothy's prepared to have his body marked in such a way as uh, to, um, obviously no one's going to check, but uh, he can say, you know, I've been through that. And I, it goes with some, he's partly Jewish heritage as well. When it becomes such a big issue later on uh, with and Titus, who's not circumcised and becomes one of Paul's traveling companions, Paul makes a big point not to have him circumcised. They refuse it so as to teach about the gospel. This is not a matter of right relationship with God. This is to win others to Christ. And there's nothing wrong with it, putting yourself out, even doing things that you wouldn't normally do or choose in order to win the gospel. It may be in going to the footy, if you hate the footy, to go with a non-Christian friend and, and learning about it and maybe learning arts and crafts in order to, to have that uh, connection with someone, putting ourselves out for the sake of the gospel. Have you ever done that? Uh, and uh, what could you do to put yourself out for the gospel in order to connect with someone, to encourage them, to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, this is what Timothy was prepared to do. And we can see that this new friendship, this new relationship in Christ, in mission, turns out to be a really fruitful one. Even right at the start, you can see how God blesses it. They travel through the towns and they passing on the decisions that the council in Jerusalem had handed down. And the churches we read were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Here is the fresh start that Paul needed. Here is the fresh start that the gospel mission needed into Europe and uh, it's so wonderful that people are becoming Christians daily and Timothy as this new upcoming leader in the church and evangelist does such a remarkable thing and uh, sometimes we can be down on, on new blood and trying them out we don't want to be doing that we've got to be encouraging the next generations to have a go even if now, at first, they don't uh, look like they're that impressive or you go, oh man, I'd rather hear the main preacher or whatever it is. Uh, hearing new thing, people, uh, giving them a go, pushing for p people forward in leadership, letting them have a go at running a Bible study at, at youth group or whatever it might have to be, such a wonderful thing for their development. But as it turns out for the church in the long run, and you can see the effect straight away that God blesses, and so who are you encouraging to have a go at some sort of mystery? Is someone encouraging you to have a go at something new? Uh, why not have a go at it? Uh, what's holding you back? Here is a fresh start. And I, I know we all long for a fresh start with the COVID and the lockdown. And we look forward to a fresh start back at church and all those things. But we can make fresh starts even now. Building new relationships and connections praying for people, putting ourselves there for us and encouraging others to take a step in gospel service. Why don't we pray? Father, we thank you for Timothy and this discovery, which seems so random, but you had planned. And for the fruit of that, even in those early days, that the churches were strengthened because of it. And thank you for the lifelong uh, partnership that 
Paul and Timothy were able to have that bore such fruit for the gospel and uh, gave us so much of the New Testament with Paul's letters to Timothy later on. And we can see the way they built churches and evangelized the world together. Father, give us a passion for your gospel. Give us uh, that, that new thing in our life or new person that can invigorate us and uh, keep us serving you. And we pray, please, that you'll help us in raising up the next generation to uh, give people a go even when uh, they're untested uh, or they have got a lot to learn. We pray, please, that we would be people who are willing in our church to do that. And we pray that you'd help us to be encouragers of people trying things. And we pray, please, that your gospel will flourish in this part of the world. Father, please bless our efforts. So many people around need to hear the gospel. Help us to put ourselves out for them. Help us to love them and help us to raise up the leaders and workers for the harvest that Jesus encourages us to pray for in his gospels. We pray, please, that you would do that and use us in your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you again tomorrow.